Okay, so today we're discussing the DDI Scientific Board restructuring. Uh, I'm Jared, I'm the Executive Director of the DDI Alliance, and I'm joined by Achim Bakarau and Ingo Barco, uh, both uh, the Chair and Vice Chair of the PASS Scientific Board. Uh, they've kindly agreed to stay on until we've made the full transition to the new Scientific Board structure and want to thank both of them. Uh, also, Ingo, was the chair of the temporary working group uh, that came up with this uh, new restructuring plan. And so today we're going to discuss uh, the changes to the structure of the scientific board. Uh, we're gonna discuss the nomination process for new, the new board, uh, the election, and then take questions. Uh, just a reminder, the scientific board proposes the scientific work plan to the membership for approval and also facilitates the scientific and technical work activities. Um, because uh, we have, um, you know, a, a good number of people here, if you could meet yourself during the discussion, uh, if you want to ask a question, feel free to do so in the chat window. And then at the end, during the question period, um, you can also raise your hand or unmute yourself to ask questions. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ingo uh, to discuss uh, the changes to the structure of the board. Ingo? Yeah, thank you, Jared. So yeah, DDI Scientific Board Restructuring. Um, maybe a little bit uh, of history at, at the beginning. Why did we do that in the first place? What was the idea behind it? It is basically, um, we found out when the bylaws were changed last time, we had the scientific board as a new instance within the CDI Alliance. And it was only consist, it was consisting of, of chair and vice chair, the roles that Achim and me currently fill. And we had the scientific board, which was composed by representatives of all member organizations. There's basically the structure that there is the annual meeting. In the morning is the meeting of the member representatives and in the afternoon is normally the meeting of the scientific representatives. And we figured out now after some years that the engagement between the uh, players within the scientific board is not too great. So basically there's one time per year, this meeting where everybody uh, comes together and uh, the chair and vice chair show what work they have done in, in the past year and uh, what the newest trends are. But there was not, not much interaction, there was not much engagement. And therefore, we had the feeling that the scientific board structure, how it was outlined in the last bylaws, simply was not functioning as, as we mentioned. And also, there was the chance also, there was already the idea when, 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 it, when it was formed that it might be changed later into another structure. So what we did is, uh, what we proposed two years ago was that we um, take the executive board as an, as an example where member representatives a vote for representatives that can also be active during the year and we wanted to have the same structure for the scientific board as well so we formed the temporary working group and it was really temporary it has not had not the typical trend of a temporary group becoming permanent the people that did a great job by basically uh, discussing multiple facets how the uh, new structure should look like uh, we reached a lot of compromises and i think the end result is a structure that is, I consider at least to be a huge improvement. So um, what is happening now? So the, the new scientific board will be in power uh, starting next year. So the terms of me and, and Achim have already ended. We are only prolonged as, as acting uh, chair and vice chair as long as then uh, until the new structure is in place. And the purpose now of this new scientific board is uh, basically, it's not. It's, it's basically to be an intermediary between the uh, scientific community. The term will, will come very soon, uh, which is basically the replacement of the old scientific board. So we made out of the old scientific board, we made it into a scientific community that can be engaged during the year, and we have now representatives that uh, can give back ideas to the community, listen to what is going on there, giving purpose, get, uh, giving direction, steer the whole thing. You, you, uh, what you can see here, provide the strategic plan, 
during the year, so by feedback loops with the scientific community, then implement the science, also the scientific work plan, oversee the working groups. So, so this is also a, a, a huge improvement. So there can, for example, be direct liaisons to different working groups. So information can flow towards the new scientific board as well. And also, um, yeah, uh, getting involved in, in research and testing and, and proposals regarding the standard. So this is basically tasks that were there before, but they have now a little bit more outlined and they have now uh, been in, in a, uh, yeah, defined so that this new scientific board can, can, can work under these uh, circumstances. Uh, this, the, the rest is still more or less the same. It's uh, development of best practices for the standards. It's uh, assessing if there are uh, any barriers to progress and how the progress is running, for example, in different working groups or different committees. And at the end, of course, pro provide the report. This is basically all function of the annual meeting. So just like before, the, the vice chair and the chair alone, now the whole scientific board uh, goes to the annual meeting and reports about the progress in the different work products. As I said before, we have now an, a, a new structure. We have now the scientific board, which only uh, con which consists of, of much less people so that they can be active uh, during the year. And we have the scientific community. This is the former scientific board. So this is basically an assembly where scientific representatives, where um, other experts or, or also technical contacts, this is also a term we will have very soon, this is also something new, uh, can assemble and can basically ask by the scientific board uh, about their opinion and feedback loops. And the scientific board then acts as a representative, as an intermediary to the community and, and can discuss things during the year in regular meetings and really have the oversight that we already expected from the old scientific board. So uh, also. To, to, to clarify the roles here, in the past there were only two roles. There was, was where the member rep representatives and the scientific rep representatives. Member representatives were the people that uh, handled administrative matters and were nominated by their organizations. And especially uh, member representatives had the possibility to vote within the DDI alliance. Scientific representatives are also existed before. They are now, they used to be. Um, so it's the people who, who represent an organization in scientific matters. And they used to be in the old scientific boards and are now automatically member in the scientific community. Um, the next one is something new. It's basically a, a wish from PC because they saw that what structure we are starting to, to, to build up here. And they also said, well, for us, it would be good to know if within an organization who is really a technical person there, who, who can be really asked if there is really something on, on a highly technical level, so really even on a programming side or a framework side. So who can be identified within organizations that uh, who can be contact if we want to do something which is highly uh, uh, in, in a technical route. And therefore, we had the idea also to name technical contacts. You might wonder because, uh, why it's member representative, scientific representative and technical contacts. It's because, um, Executive board and scientific boards board are higher level bodies than the TC. The TC is a permanent working group that is connected to the uh, 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 scientific board. And therefore, we did not want, our decision was within the, the, the temporary working group that uh, they should not be on the same level. So therefore we uh, made this somehow this, um, yeah, so that it's, it can be it can it can it can be seen more easily. We, we uh, chose to formulate their little bit different names or technical contact and not technical representative because uh, simply the 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 TC is not a board. So therefore, we wanted to have, uh, have a distinction between the two of them. Um, you don't have uh, if if somebody is fearing something. Oh God! Now I have to nominate three people within my organization for three different roles. Uh, this is not necessary. Uh, this is the ideal case, but basically uh, organizations can choose, for example, that all three roles fall to the same person. So it's not that an organization is required to have three different persons in place. It's just the three roles. And those three roles can be divided to a number of people of the choosing of their organization. 
organization. So next slide, yeah, okay. Yeah, but what happens then is we have, except that for the, uh, so we used to have the annual meeting of the scientific board. Now, of course, as the name has changed, we have the annual meeting of the scientific community. So the assembly comes together and the scientific board reports then to the, to the, to the scientific assembly. And the scientific board should meet regularly. So we have, um, so, 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 so this is actually up to the scientific board. We have uh, said they have, to, uh, they have to do multiple meetings during the year to, to, to discuss the progress of the different products. Um, how many meetings they will have, this is something for the scientific board to figure out. We have given them some guidelines. So for example, we said, okay, once per month uh, or should be, uh, should, should be a, a, a rule of thumb there. But actually this is something that the new scientific board will decide for themselves. So also we have deliberately left some things open, like how often do they meet in which terms? Or, because we thought this is something we can only de decide in the moment all of these people have come together. And uh, the same thing is for the, for the voting of the chair and the vice chair. So the scientific board has at the moment only the task that they have to vote a, a chair and a vice chair. How they organize the vote within the scientific board, that is also something where we have not uh, specified how they, do, they, they have to vote, and they have to come up with a voting mechanism, but we did not specify it in the bylaws how this works. Yeah, that's more or less that's more or less everything that, that, that I have to say at the moment. I think I can give back to or hand back to Jared because uh, he wanted to explain the nomination process because we need now people to populate the scientific board. Great, thanks, Ingo. So I'm gonna talk about the nomination process as well as the election for the new board. As Ingo uh, shared, the scientific board will be composed of seven voting members. Um, those will be elected by the designated members of the Alliance. Um, representatives from members and associate members of the, of the Alliance are eligible to serve as these seven members of the scientific board um, also on the scientific board, not in elected positions, uh, will be the chair of the technical committee, as well as uh, myself as the executive director, but will be serving as ex officio members. And the scientific board, once it's constituted, may appoint up to two external advisory members, also without internal vote. Um, so the nomination will be for the seven voting members of the board. Um, a, a majority, so at least four out of the seven elected members must be from member organizations. So those are full dues paying members. No member or associate member shall have more than one representative serving on the scientific board at the same time. And we are uh, opening the, the period of nominations through the 7th of December. I believe that's a Monday. Uh, anyone can submit nominations and just email me. Uh, that's lyle at umich.edu. The election will be for two weeks. Uh, we'll take all of the nominees and use the same uh, voting mechanism that we've done in the past through Qualtrics. Uh, then all of the designated member representatives uh, with voting rights uh, shall elect up, uh, up to seven members uh, of the board during that two week period. And that's December 8th through the 21st. For the initial election, three members will be elected for two year terms and four for four year terms. So we will ask nominees if they want to serve two or four year, four year terms or no preference. Terms will start on January 1st, 2021, and then run through either June 2023 or June 2025. And for the election, if there are more candidates than positions, the election will be decided on the basis of those candidates getting the most votes. And if we do have a tie vote, a second round of voting will take place. 
So that's it. That's the description of the nomination and election process, as well as what the major changes were. At this point, we want to open it up to questions from um, those of you who are participating right now. So feel free to type in your questions in the chat box or just unmute yourself. Our, <clears throat> this is Larry. Are uh, the ex officio members uh, voting members of the scientific board? No, they they are are not voting members. Okay. Yeah, they they do not have internal vote. No, that's a good question, Larry. Other questions? So uh, we received another question this time from Knut. Can you elaborate a little on the content of the scientific work plan? Ingo or Akim, would you like to take this one? Yeah, I think in, in, in theory, according to the new bylaws, uh, at the annual meeting, uh, there should be yeah, at least the basis of this annual work plan should be made. Uh, I think all the details how to do that uh, have still to be established by the, by the new scientific board, and especially because it starts now in January. Uh, I think uh, I, I would see it this way. The new scientific board uh, should look at what is currently going on, what was discussed in the last uh, two or three years in the annual meetings. All the minutes are available. And uh, which would be good points to focus on uh, and have not been resolved until now. And so it's, I think it's a negotiation process currently. Ingo, maybe you, you would like to add to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, Arvin, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is, um, this is the spirit that the whole thing has. So the, the scientific work plan is, is not really a new thing because we had this also before because the scientific board or more or less chair and vice chair um, were also listening to the demands of, of the of the community to come up with the plans or the topics that should be uh, focused on as well as the budget uh, most of the most of the time the scientific work plan has also a direct impact on budget so where do we from the budget that we have for further development where should the budget be put and the process is indeed like that that during the year the new scientific board with its, its uh, uh, um, meetings that has uh, over the month uh, looks for the trends, sees the demands, steers uh, what what is happening in in in, in, in the uh, working groups, and then comes up with a proposal for the scientific work plan at for the, the annual meeting, and then it's introduced to the community, and the community can then decide uh, they have so because all this is basically what the bylaws are, are always said that uh, the, 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 the voting power then to accept something is always with the members. So the member representatives can then vote on this or can accept the scientific work plan and then it's uh, in power for the next year. So this is, so, the, the, so we actually took the old process and, and formalized it a, a little more so that it gets more transparent and it gets more into, in, into a workflow. But the details, how this works, is again something that we give to the new scientific board just as a guideline. They have to come up with the work processes uh, that they are actually using in, in, in their group. So, so, so because um, you have to do it like this and that is not really something that you can really put into bylaws because bylaws always have to be on, on a meter level. So they cannot be like something like, you have to use this project man management method to, to, to come up with the construction of this work plan. But this is something that the 
group. So, the, so uh, it has to decide in the in the constituting or in the, in the first sessions that they have. They have to come out. We have now a new structure, and therefore the new structure. They have also to fill now the new structure a little bit with life and also with processes. Inga or Akim, can you discuss the role of the advisory members? So the the purpose sure. behind them and what you envision the role of them to be? Sure. The, the, the generic idea is here to, to get uh, additional perspectives and advice from uh, people who are basically outside uh, of the DDI membership and maybe also outside of the DDI community. I think this would add, uh, yeah, uh, really understanding how the DDI Alliance could be part of a global research data management infrastructure. And uh, this could avoid that. Uh, yeah, we, we have we have only uh, a, a few on ourselves. No? How this can be real realized? I think that depends um, very much from who we we could get for these roles, no? and. Uh, also, I'm, I, I don't remember, but I think uh, we, the process uh, has also be to be developed who can propose uh, yeah, people for these positions. Again, Ingo, I'm sure you have also some. Yeah, um, thank you. Maybe, I, I think, I, think uh, I can add to this explanation uh, by, by giving a little bit of, of the history why this uh, uh, possibility exists. The, 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 the bylaws say something like that the scientific board can have up to two advisors. They can also nominate no advisor or they can, of course, it, it's, it would be very wise to get the outside perspective as well. As well so the scientific board should make use of that. Um, Actually, the structure is a compromise uh, between two wishes. We wanted to have this outside perspective and we wanted to have the new internal structure. So normally bigger organizations, when they have a scientific board, they have a scientific board, they have some uh, a council of external advisors that they can uh, use as a, as, as a knowledge base and an additional re uh, resource for getting more, more scientific perspective on things. So for example, my university or my institute has also a scientific board. There are no internal people in that. It's only external people. And we go to them with our new ideas just to get feedback on it. And this now the possibility. So, so, and and we, we figured out having the new scientific board and having something like an external scientific council uh, would be overkill for the current size of the organization. So we said, nah, it would be great to have that, but this is something that cannot really be financed and, and can also not really be organized. So we had the idea to say, okay, to, to get something like a, a light version of that, we have the possibilities to get the outside perspective by nominating two additional members into the scientific board without voting rights. So they cannot really, they are not members, so therefore they cannot, cannot decide on internal things of, of, of the DBI lines. But on the other hand, um, they can give perspective. They can say, well, in maybe they are from, from other metadata standards, for example, maybe they are from other data management uh, organizations and they can always give an input like, well, uh, we had a similar problems or we have similar, ideas, we did it like that. So we get, so we want to have this as, as a kind of uh, external feedback and, and external perspective possibility. Thanks. Any other questions from the audience?
Okay, uh, another question is, what is the, ex the workload one should expect if he or she is on the scientific board? That's a difficult one because it does not exist yet and it has not constituted yet. So there should be at least time to have one. I guess this, if I have to predict, I guess the scientific board will have one meeting per month. Uh, but I think the members will be expected to be the liaison to some of the working groups. And I guess there is also time needed for that and also to read material, to read uh, reports that are coming in. So. I, I would estimate it's, let's say something like two to three days per month, I would guess. That's somehow also what you what, what, what we have to add. I don't know how this, how this is with Achim, but this is what, what I, the time that I invested for the vice chair role in the, for the scientific board roundabout. And there also there are meetings with other working groups and with other, for example, also the executive board could happen or the marketing group. So there might be, some interaction and also this needs some time. But it, at the moment, it's not that easy to predict because it, it depends also a little bit on what the uh, scientific board uh, uh, uses as processes, which have not been defined yet. Uh, Arim, do you have uh, another idea or, or more insight? Uh, yeah, it's it's just complementary. Uh, as, as you mentioned, I, I, the, the, the general idea is that the, there is a monthly call and uh, yeah, the call will be one or two hours probably and then there is a unique preparation time uh, and, and debriefing time and uh, then I, I expect that the scientific board um, yeah, has additional activities like uh, maybe subgroups or uh, as Ingo described, liaisons to working groups or to other committees of the uh, DDI Alliance. And I, I think because it's, it's a committee on a, on a higher level, there are also a kind of policies uh, uh, could be uh, discussed that also yeah, short, very short papers uh, would make sense. You know? So I think each member uh, can uh, yeah, commit just to the necessary calls, but can commit endless time to additional activities. There's a full range of uh, options, I think. And it will very much depend, I think, how the committee itself uh, defines that and develops. But um, we, we, we were hoping that with this new committee or with this new organization of the committee, more activity uh, can be done and also that basically a, uh, yeah, a little empty space between uh, technical committee, other working groups, and on the other hand, the executive board can be filled uh, with content-oriented uh, middle-level uh, discussions of the executive board. Because uh, the, the the bylaws uh, basically define the, the tasks of the executive board yeah, on a strategic level and also on the budget level. And the new bylaws uh, define now uh, the tasks of the scientific board on, on, the, on the content, on the subject level, uh, but not uh, like yeah, on the level like the technical committee or like the training crew. And um, so I would expect if you, if you make a sum of all of this, yeah, I think could be one day per month, right? Maybe more, it, dep it depends a little. No? And also, that was a plan before COVID times. Um, an annual meeting is also uh, yeah, envisioned, where uh, 
the scientific board can meet in the margins of a conference like uh, ISS or ID to meet uh, for one day, for example. Thank you. Any other questions? Feel free to add them to the chat window or unmute yourself. Okay, it looks like we don't have any further questions at this time. Um, if you can think of other questions after this meeting, feel free to email uh, the three of us. Uh, remember that the nomination period is extended through the 7th of December, and then the voting period will run on the 8th uh, for two weeks. And that the new board will start or is planned to start uh, the 1st of January, 2021. And we're really looking forward to this new board uh, functioning well so that uh, we can uh, steer the scientific and technical work activities. So thanks again to all the attendees and to Ingo and Akim and the temporary working group that proposed this new restructuring. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you.